We see it again today that in a private citizen gunfight, when your gun's out of ammo, your fight is over. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Harare in Zimbabwe. Landlord Go is a fun, free-to-play mobile game that combines the best of Monopoly and Pokemon Go. Buy and sell properties all over the world, collect rent, and have fun with friends in a massively multiplayer virtual reality world. Hit the link in the description for a million dollars in starting cash and become the next global real estate magnate. Download it today at the link in the description. I can't find a news story on this, but you see a Chinese national here who is carrying a gun on his hip who is in Zimbabwe. And I've compressed this portion just for the sake of time. If you go watch the original, in the middle of this, the dogs start barking so we know something could be up. Uh, but then watch comes up the steps here. There are multiple guys gonna come up the steps with multiple firearms as armed robbers. Then what's gonna go down here is as they're kind of creeping up, you're gonna see our defender come out with the gun on his hip. We do have audio, so let's listen in and hear how this fight goes. The little bit of news that I've been able to finagle out of this, if you go watch the original, he continues to have uh, a fight with these guys, shoots out the other windows with that one guy kind of down, you know, in the stairwell there. It's gonna kind of finally come and lock the doors here and, and you know, get where they can't come and get him at least a little bit. But that guy that's down there on the floor eventually crawled off. Cops did catch him later. I don't think anyone else was hurt. And that's where this one ends. Pretty serious stuff there. I'm gonna ask you not to give me too hard a time about the background here over the next few days. I'm working on it, doing these in batches, trying to get better and just try something new. So what do you think? So first of all, I do think this video makes a fairly strong case for home carry. And I'm not saying that you have to carry at home. I'm not saying that's something that everybody has to do. But certainly in this case, having the firearm on his person was really important. And you know, when he comes around the corner there, is a big deal. But I think even the bigger case can be made here than home carry is closing and locking that door. So if you know you're in for the night now, it's only 7 p.m. or whatever if you look in the timestamp. So I get it, maybe he's wanting to go in and out, whatever. But if you're upstairs and that upstairs is where you are and you're living in a place that needs bars like that, maybe close them when you come in the house, right? To have that security would be a big thing. Next thing here, again, if you go watch the original, the dogs were barking and freaked out. That's a clue, friends. I think a dog is a, is a pretty good home defense system and can be very, very helpful. Now, as we see our perps start creeping up, the gunfight here is gonna get real interesting real fast. But let's pay attention to the fact that we have multiple armed attackers. But that said, first person to put a hit in a significant area, the other guy almost always wins. So their, their uh, advantage evaporates and they evaporate pretty quick. Now, let's pay attention to our times here because our guy is just kind of walking around and doing his thing, smoking a cigarette, whatever. And now he's got to orient to the problem. So when we talk about, you know, Colonel Boyd's OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, and act, this is kind of what we get there. He sees what's going. Now I have to orient to that problem, decide what to do and act. And now he decides to shoot. Now, of course, 
This is why we say don't draw from the drop. He makes a decision that he is going to draw his gun, but of course, because the other guy is up and on him, he gets outshot. So the guy gets a shot off first. In fact, two of the perps are going to get shots off first, which is one of the biggest reasons we say don't draw from the drop. Instead, purposeful compliance, duck around the corner, whatever, get your gun out, launch a counter ambush. Okay, fine, but if you just straight draw from the drop, this is why that's a bad idea because thankfully these guys can't shoot. Now the other part of that, they missed him. So thank God they missed him. And that's the, this is a good thing. Thank God bad guys can't shoot. Another problem that our good guy had is that he was carrying with the chamber empty. And because of that, then he had to put his second hand in the fight. And I know people all the time say, well, if I don't have that half second, I'm in real trouble. You're darn right you're in real trouble. You're in a gunfight. Therefore, you need to actually be going for it and actually be ready with the gun because you are in the world's worst condition. You are in a terribly bad spot. So this is one of the big reasons here that we want to say, hey, keep your firearm chambered, keep your firearm ready to go because you might very well need it in that day. So now you get a second shot that gets off here, but because it's taken him so long to get the first shot off, he is having a hard time. And, and again, because he had to chamber the gun, he's not really able to, to get on his sights as well. And he's shooting the gun one-handed. Very common here, which is another reason. Carry your gun chambered, ready to go, two hands on the gun. Now notice here that our perps gun has malfunctioned. His, the perps gun has locked to the rear. Thank God perps carry crappy guns and they you know, uh, don't know how to use them very well. We're very grateful for that. So first hit is the biggest deal. And because he got that first hit on that guy, now he's gonna get after these guys. But I want you to see, he is actually shooting here at about 0.2 split. So with one hand on the gun, he's shooting like crazy and that's caused him to have his gun go empty. Number one cause of reloads is missing. And I want you to recognize here, big deal is that you wanna use the rounds that are in the gun because when the gun goes empty, your gunfight is over. I know plenty of people, we talk about reloads, but for private citizen gunfights, functionally the gunfight is over. And now why? Because he's gonna have to go, he doesn't have one on him. He's gonna look and go, oh no, what's wrong with my gun? because he thinks he has a malfunction. He doesn't have a malfunction, he has shot the gun empty. And so now he's gotta think, oh, I need a reload. Well, of course, he doesn't have a reload on him. That reload is out in the room, which is okay, because the bad guys who can run off have run off. And so the gunfight is functionally over in that moment. So I do recommend carry the highest capacity firearm you can. And the reason for that is, again, to not have to go and make the 14 second reload that this guy did. Now he comes back and instantly fires down the hallway. I don't know what he saw down there. We can't see it, so I'm not gonna say whether that was good, bad, or indifferent. I will say that I want you to recognize that for, for all intents and purposes, the reload was irrelevant, uh, given the fact that I'm pretty sure these guys ran off and he's just shooting at noises at this point, is my guess. I'm, I'm not gonna guarantee you that because I can't see what he sees, but if the, there are still threats there, probably a far better idea to barricade himself in the room than come out. Next thing I wanna see here is this guy uses his phone and he's call, calling 911, whatever. I would strongly encourage you. This is why I like having a smartwatch. This is also why I really want you to learn how to use your virtual assistant. Whether you're using you know, Google or whether you're using Apple products, whatever, I don't care. What I want you to do is instead of having that, your hand on that phone, get the phone where you can talk to it without having to have your hands on it. Keep two hands on the gun and let the speaker phone or your watch or whatever be your method of talking. Because you notice here, he's trying to type on the phone with his fingers while he's got a gun in his hand, while there could be deadly threats about. So really, really use your virtual assistants. Use the ability for speaker phones. Tell it to call emergency services for you. So then that way you, you were prepared in that moment. And then of course, I really think the biggest thing here is as soon as practicable, I want you to create a barricade, create a barrier for yourself while you wait for the authority. So in this case, that is as soon as possible locking this door so that the guys can't get up the stairs at you. Because you know this guy who's laying in the stairwell is eventually going to kind of come to and crawl off. And you don't know if he's still capable. When, when he gets blood volume back into his head, he could want to fight some more. So lock that door as fast as you can and then get yourself to a safe location. I would really recommend not looking out the windows like this guy is and not kind of shooting off randomly down the neighborhood or whatever because you probably have a finite amount of ammo as well. And you know, not knowing exactly who's what, when, and where, I would just recommend hunkering down, barricading yourself, and waiting for the authorities. So I think this guy did a pretty phenomenal job. I'm not giving him a hard time. He won his fight. Let's think about carrying chamber full. Let's think about being the first one to make a good hit by doing the right things to do that. And let's think about carrying the highest capacity firearm we can to cover our ass.